So this is a torsion differential that we made in video 2309 and it could be argued that this is the height of differential development. Now differentials, they have two jobs. One is they can combine power from two shafts and output to one shaft or they can take power from one shaft and split it across two shafts. And that's what helps turn a car around a corner when the wheels are travelling at different speeds. So they're essential to automotive. And of course, because cars are absolutely everywhere, then the differential that we know as splitting power is perhaps the most popular. Because there's a huge argument about who invented the differential. And it can be said that in the Oh, third century AD China, the, invent, the differential was invented. But there is an argument to say that it appeared on the Antikythera in 87 BC, so nobody's actually sure, but it is an old mechanism. And in the 1400s, Leonardo da Vinci used a differential to basically do two jobs. He invented a spring-driven car, and it's been replicated to show that it actually works, but it used two springs as the power source, and of course, it was a cart, so it had to turn corners. And he used his own design of a differential in that. And I was captivated by that, because there's an argument that can be made that the modern differential traces its history to Leonardo da Vinci, if not further back. So what I thought I'd do was give it a go to make a differential from Leonardo da Vinci's work that would be a da Vinci differential. In the 1820s, the bevel gear was developed, and of course that revolutionised how we transmitted power at 90 degrees. But prior to that, if you wanted to do that job, what you were doing was using lantern and pinion gears, like you would find in a windmill or a water mill. So any work based on what da Vinci was doing is essentially going to be a collection of lantern and pinions put together at the right angles. Now, I don't plan on going in a tinker can demonstration of this because it is essentially just cylinders of the right size put together. So, of course, I turned to Tinkercad and drew this up, and all we really need to do now is print them off and put them together. Right, to put this together, take the long red axle and one of these and pop the axle through with the head of the pin facing that way and glue it into place. Reverse it and then drop one of these black rings on. Now take the large yellow wheel and feed the red axle through the centre. Now you're going to need these two blue lanterns, this joining piece, the caps and two small spacers. The first thing is take this piece and feed it into the centre there and then glue that on top there and with this one glue that on top there. When they're glued in place make sure that centre rod is fully in. Take the yellow, slide that in there. Take this other one, slide it in there, then push them back so they're free to spin, but add the spacers and glue those spacers into place. Like that, so that they're free to spin. Then this central blue that you didn't glue into place, feed it through the other one, and then put a spot of glue there to glue it to that one, but do not glue it to that one. Now move this red gear up so it engages the two blue lanterns and make sure that it will turn. And then that black spacer gets glued to the red axle, but not to the yellow gear. Now we take the other one of these, the short red axle, that slides in there. We add another black ring onto there, and then that goes into the base. There. Then we take this whole assembly. Pop on yet another black spacer, line it up, and you're going to need to bend this out a little bit so that that whole assembly slots together. There we go, <laughs> like that. Then you pull that back, and yet another spacer goes onto here, and again, this glues onto the red, but nowhere else to hold that thing in that position. So the whole thing should turn, and the yellow should turn separately as well. Then what we do is we take this one and line it up so that it engages. And when we've got it engaged, slide this black spacer down, glue it in place to hold it to get hold it in position, and then add another spacer on the outside there to keep that in position. And then we have finished that section. 
For this next section, we need the large blue lantern. Move the yellow out of the way, take the base plate and this axle, shove it through there and glue it into space, into place, and yet another thin spacer, and that whole thing goes in there, and then we have a thick spacer that we add on there and glue that in position again, so that's free to turn. So now we've got on the final lantern and the turn handle, and we have ourselves a differential. Now I suspect it's more inspired by Da Vinci than anything else, but it behaves as a differential would. If I turn the input handle, of course, what we get is both of the axles turning. You can see that because of those two pin gears. And if I restrict the movement, that is, I grip one of these so that gear doesn't turn, and we still unput power, then you can see that that gear is still turning. And that's one of the things that, uh, well, what differentials are all about. It's one of the things that makes it a differential. Now, I will, of course, put these files on Thingiverse should anybody want to muck around with them and play with them. It's really an historic curiosity more than anything, but then looking back on how these things developed, how they were made, and the different ways that you can make them, I actually find it to be quite useful for my own ideas in developing them, because this is quite crude, and you can go from crude to complex in nice, easy steps, but often... Crude is what gets you up and running, and complex is what stops you. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do like and subscribe.